Hello, hello, everybody. It's 9.57 p.m. Central Time on the 22nd of December, 2022. It's Thursday here in the United States, getting ready to go into the weekend. Of course, we've got Christmas right around the corner. Hope you are all doing well. Hope you're all having a good holiday season, whatever you want to call it. We are here to talk about seismic events. In case you didn't know where you're at, we're looking at the Earthquake 3D live stream, which is still running over on Twitch, of course. And let me get a display capture turned on so you can see what I see ever so slightly better. Let me, let me just go ahead and turn off this fireplace crackle while we're at it. I don't know if you're going to want to hear me sitting by the fireplace doing my seismic update unless you can see the dang fireplace. So let's start over here. We've got that big activity that took place over on the west coast of the United States. 6.4 earthquake struck two days ago, followed by a 4.6, <laughs> an inverse earthquake, right? 6.4 and a 4.6. Back to back here off the coast, uh, right along the coast of California going off the coast of Oregon. After that, a new 5.3 struck down south off the coast of Mexico. But the big activity, of course, everybody talking about there were two fatalities unfortunately with that and uh, that's just the start of the update so it's a big earthquake but we have to go back about a week and a half almost two weeks we had a 6.3 earthquake to 6.4 up here in the Aleutian Island chain and that's on the north side of the plate boundary let's get a USGS plate boundary map open so that you can see what I see ever so slightly better and you'll know what I'm talking about in about two seconds when you see these red lines that go around the outside edge of the Pacific Plate. So we had a 6.3 to 6.4 earthquake up here first. Then a spread of activity went over and down into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Came out of the Juan de Fuca right into Humboldt County there, Northern California, north of the Bay Area, 6.4 quake. Now before all of that, we had the deep earthquake that happened down below Bay Area or around the same time. So about five or six days ago, a deep earthquake happened below this location here. And this is pretty interesting because I made a post on it and showed everybody what was there at El Cerrito, California. Let me show it to you. I'm going to zoom in here. El Cerrito. And it came in originally as a 4.1. They downgraded it to a 3.6. But a deep earthquake happened down below this. Now, this is a recycling center right here. Trash. And this is a satellite array. Now, I don't know if that's receiving or broadcasting. It looks like there's actually, looks like there's broadcasting on there as well. There's also an antenna there. And this is a star fort, an ancient, old structure that they've turned into a trash dump and satellite array. We're finding these all over the world, star forts that have been turned into trash dumps. And it's not like they're sculpting out trash in a, like some kind of landfill that would look like this. No, they're turning these old structures, I, I guess, to try to hide them. I don't know. They've got the antenna array in the middle of this one, which is so, so odd. And I'm not joking when I say that they turn this into a trash dump. They've even taken the Google car right down here into the turnaround at the trash dump. The recycling center, whatever you want to call it. And then right behind it, you can see the satellite array, and it goes up on the hill. And these are huge hills. So now this is like a bastion fort. When I talk about a star fort, we're really talking about like a bastion fort. But this is way bigger than anything that the French or Spanish could have ever built. It's uh, several hundred feet high and about a mile long. So there we go. That's where the deep earthquake happened. Then followed by this. So let's recap. First, Alaska, 6.3 to 6.4 quake. Then, a deep earthquake down below that satellite array and star fort and recycling center. Then, a shallower, larger earthquake up above it, the same size as what came rolling in to begin with. And all that means is that the whole northeast and north Pacific was saturated with 6.3 to 6.4 worth of energy going from Alaska down to the United States. Now that that's happened, and now that a new earthquake has struck here down in Mexico, I have to issue new warnings for two different areas. 
we have to issue a warning for the area where the rings overlap here between the 6.4 and the 5.3. And wouldn't you just say they're about a magnitude apart? A 6.4 down to a 5.4 would be exactly one magnitude, right? So right here where the rings are overlapping, it brings us into Southern California, North Mexico, Southwest Arizona. I'm going to have to issue a warning for Southern California. I'll tell you where in just a moment. We're not going to do it right where the rings overlap. And I have to issue a warning for the Texas-Oklahoma border region for two similar-sized earthquakes, both going into the 5.4 range, so somewhere in the mid-range 5 level. But like I said, I'm not going to warn right where the rings overlap here at the border. I'm going to go just north, right out here into the Mojave Desert, in the middle of the Mojave, next to Pisgah Crater. So let me show you where we're talking about here, and we're going to look for a mid-range 5, basically, out there in the Mojave. And the reason I'm looking here, I'll show you the smaller earthquakes in just a moment. And hopefully this will make sense to you. Here's Pisgah Crater. And this is also the Hector Mine earthquake location from 1999, the biggest earthquake in California's recent modern history. And this is also the spot where the steam plume came out of the ground. And I captured that on radar back in 2011, catching me international infamy press releases from the USGS and so forth, which they actually had to delete their press releases about me uh, because they were incorrect. Uh, they tried to say that the steam that was coming out of the ground on a summer day was a thunderstorm, and it went on for three days straight out of the same area. On day two, they deleted their press release saying it was a possible thunderstorm because it was coming from the same spot for three days straight out of the ground. And that's right next to a volcano and where the biggest earthquake in California's history is at, or recent modern history. So we're going to warn out there right in the middle. Now, again, why? Well, smaller earthquakes are going to tell us where to look. So let's go down and zoom in and show you. There's a line of earthquakes going down California's coast, which is normal. We see this. This is the San Andreas, and you can trace these earthquakes out along the San Andreas. Once we get down here, though, we get to a place called Parkfield. We jump over into the valley. Two sets of earthquakes have now broken out in the valley and one set over to the west. This is like a block point where we go around this area, even though the San Andreas goes right through there. Here's the red line of the San Andreas. It goes right down through Parkfield and carries on down to Southern California. But when we get to Parkfield, we jump over into the valley. Why? Let me show you what's there. Coming down the San Andreas. Let me make sure you can see this. Northwest to southeast, you can see the fracture in the plate itself on the topography. Get down to Parkfield right here. And we jump over to this, all of these oil and gas drill points. And there's just thousands and thousands of them. I show them all the time. I've showed them for years and years and years. The energy comes down the San Andreas, gets derailed, and goes over to the valley. Now, there's another earthquake over here in the east part of the valley, a 1.6. This is next to a volcanic feature. So let me show it to you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a quarry blast. Eh, it's a quarry blast next to a volcanic feature. Eh, I don't know. Let's go look it up. Why not? Let me get a sip of my coffee while we do this. Well, there is a quarry somewhat nearby. There is. There is. There's one right here. Look at that. Wow. Well, I guess we don't need to worry. I don't even need to talk about this thing right here. This thing. This big circular shape thing which is called a lacolith. It's a bulge in the plate. But we would only be concerned about that if it's an earthquake, not a quarry blast. How ironic. Okay, well, we can ignore that one. We go down the San Andreas. We jump over to the valley with a two. What's over here all on the west? Well, there's a fault zone. It's fault zones going from here, San Luis Obispo, down to Lompoc. And you see another two off the coast or right along the coast east north east well due east of Lompoc do you want to see what's there we'll go down here here's Lompoc right here and the earthquakes are coming down and then going over to the east let's go get the coordinates so we're not guessing where we have to look Goleta 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 put the coordinates in and go see now, do you see these splotches out off the coast in the water there? Well, first of all, we got a big air airport right there, but uh, this. This is an offshore rig 
Oil and gas. Beautiful. Oh, wait. Hey, look at that. You see it? Eh. What are you worried about? What are you so worried about? You damn tree huggers. You guys freaking just, you know. What are you? Part of the Greenpeace? You're some enviro anarchist? Uh, who gives a shit, right? Who gives a shit? Who gives a flying about it, you know? I don't care anymore, man. I don't give a shit. We're going to move on out of here. Never mind the earthquake next to it. Never mind the oil slick in the water. You got better things to do. Like complain about social stuff. And... You got to be kidding me, dude. I just got totally derailed by seeing that. What was I even talking about? Okay, line of earthquakes coming down across the San Andreas jumps over into the valley, over to the oil pumping operations. Then we go down and go over to the west, and we go down through the San Luis Obispo Fault, and we go down to an oil pumping operation. What's down at the south tip of the valley down here? Man, can we have, like, some saving grace here? Because, like, we got a quarry blast, we've got drill points, we've got offshore rigs. Can we just get a real earthquake in here? Let's go down to Lamont, California, see what's there. Can we just get one earthquake that's not caused by some kind of stupid human interference here? You gotta be kidding me, dude. Oh my god. All right, anything here at all that I need to see? Anybody want to tell me anything before I move on? What are these ponds here? Well, these ponds are actually used. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got the power lines right here. Oh, great. Okay, well, right next to the power lines, we have these more drill points for oil and gas again. Let me zoom in and show you. So this is not for collecting water to water the crops here, guys. They go right through the farm fields, all these pads, and they just go right past the farm fields and carry on back down out into the desert. Oil and gas, black gold, Texas tea. And the oil pumping operation just goes right, like I said, through the farm fields, right back up, and then they've done all this. Again, these are this is just the insanity of California, right? Look how many oil wells there are. And this is the San Andreas right here. So San Andreas, drill points, drill points, drill points, drill points, drill points, drill points, and then the power lines. The power lines gets into a whole separate lecture I could give on very low frequency induced earthquakes and what's going on with the power lines above the earth just by 100 feet or 50 feet or 25 feet and how that's aiding in a flow following the power lines. It's not that the power lines are causing the earthquakes, it's that the seismic force is also operating on a very low frequency to ultra low frequency basis. And these are like circuit boards basically printed on the surface of the earth, the power lines right above the surface and guiding that wave, like a wave guide in a microwave. So earthquakes follow power lines and train tracks. We've already observed that thousands of times, thousands of times. Yeah, I'll say it thousands. We've seen thousands of examples of earthquakes following power lines and railroad tracks. And again, it's just like a circuit board. So when you're talking about electric flow going through a circuit board and then you put like a wire on the surface of the circuit board or, you know, some kind of track for the power to follow, it's going to follow it. Now, let's recap. Big earthquake out off the coast caused damage to fatalities up in Northern California. Issued a warning for it two days before it happened. It was over on my YouTube community page, all my community posts, all my tweets, all my everything's gone. I deleted every single frickin' thing. I'm sick of it, dude. Anyway, we'll get back to it at some point, but man, dude, if you guys knew what was going on. So, you have to catch my posts when I post them, I guess. I don't really care if you caught it or not. I issued the warning two days before. Here's the earthquake now. Line of earthquakes coming out from it going down to Southern California. We're expecting a new mid-range five to strike out in the Mojave. Now, I'm trying to get it within 200 miles. I just showed you the area out in the Mojave. It's called Pisgah Crater, and it's where the steam plume happened back in 2011. I'm going to measure 200 miles out from Pisgah Crater. We're going to see how far that takes us because I'm trying to get it within 200 miles. So 200 miles takes us pretty much all the way up here. See, it takes us pretty much next to Long Valley. 200 miles takes us all the way out here to Lompoc. It encompasses the whole L.A. basin. 200 miles takes us pretty much down to... San Diego and the U.S. border with Mexico. 
200 miles takes us all the way out over here, over into Arizona. And it takes us out about this far over into Utah. Uh, it covers 200, takes us all the way to beyond Las Vegas. This is Las Vegas right here. Here, let me turn on my borders and labels one. Here's Las Vegas. So it's a pretty big ring that we're going to watch with the center of this being the Mojave. If it goes as far away as Vegas, I'll be pretty surprised. And if it goes over to the coast over along L.A., actually, I'll be surprised too. The lines of earthquakes are all pointing down towards the Mojave, which is the point of me showing you all these small earthquakes and the drill points. So we're coming down the San Andreas. We jump over into the valley. We're coming down the California-Nevada border. It's slightly different. These are not drill points up here. These are all volcanoes. Oh, once we get down here to South Nevada, all these are directly next to and inside of our nuclear test sites. But the rest of these are all at volcanoes at the California-Nevada border, every single one of them. And so, a line of earthquakes going... In, do you need me to show it to you? If you're a new viewer, you know, you're probably like, huh, what, California-Nevada border, uh, volcanoes? Up here is where we start. See this giant oval shape? The giant oval shape is an ancient caldera. I had to find myself, actually. No professional had ever noticed this. <laughs> I made videos on it. They said that I must be mistaken, and now people are looking into it. Anyway, Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, and this is a giant caldera surrounded with its own volcanoes, and it gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge and in the middle. On the south side of it, we have Steamboat Springs, which is a geothermal feature. Huge, I'll show it to you in a second. And on the north side, we have the needles at Pyramid Lake. The spacing on both geothermal fields is about the same on both sides of this thing. So down here on the south side, we have Steamboat Springs, where humans have drilled in to get steam, and they're turning all these turbines. You see those there? Okay, turbines are all over the place there. A lot amount, a large amount of steam, a lot coming out. And then up here on the north side are the needles at Pyramid Lake, the tufa deposits, a large geyser-like geothermal field there. Earthquakes around the outside edge, two folds on either side, two deep basins on either side. Again, two deep lakes filled with water. This thing. Okay. Why does it matter so much? Why are you taking so much time to show it to you? Look, line of earthquakes going right through the center of it. From Lake Tahoe up to Pyramid Lake. Branching off over to the west, out to the west side of it. Let's go show you. Going from down here, Lake Tahoe, up to here, Pyramid Lake. Branching out to the west side. Okay, now this is the pinnacle tip of a giant star fort that I've showed in previous videos. I'm not going to bother to show now. Down to the south, we have a line of earthquakes going through and around Long Valley Caldera. It's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. So California border west, Nevada border east, and then a line of earthquakes going around this. California, Nevada border. Let's turn the borders and labels back on. It's right here. Line of earthquakes going around the known supervolcano, which also is a large oval shape. And it's surrounded by volcanoes as well and gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge as well. Once we go over to the east across the border, we go to this place, Monte Cristo Hills, volcanic buttes that broke apart a few years ago with 6.0 plus level activity. Now, oh, hold on one second. My microphone's coming loose there. So this got hit a couple of years ago with 6.0 level activity. And a line of earthquakes is going from Long Valley over to it. We have sixes out off the coast. So, California-Nevada border. I'm going to warn you for one magnitude less than what I warned Southern California for. I think most of this energy is going to go down to the Mojave. The remainder of the energy, about a 4.5's worth of energy, should strike right here at the California-Nevada border next to Long Valley. So a new 4.5 should be incoming in the next several days, which should get everybody's attention. It's enough to knock chimneys down and take facades off houses once we get above 4.5. So I'm going to watch for that. I'm trying to get it within a magnitude, by the way. So if I am off by a magnitude, if it's a magnitude more, please don't fault me. If it's a magnitude less, please don't beat me up too hard. I'm trying to get it within a magnitude. Now, over to the east by southeast, we, I mentioned the nuclear test sites. Most people don't know about them. Do you know what's next to the new test sites? I guess you'd have to go watch a previous video of mine. But I'll just tell you there. Well, there's two things. One, Area 51. 
Okay, everybody's heard of Area 51. We all know about Area 51 or whatever. It's not aliens, okay. Government facility, but it's right next to the nuke test sites here. Here's our valley full of craters. All these craters are underground nuke test sites. And let me turn on the Google Earth community. We can just get randomly get one of the names on one of these. U.S. Nuke Operation Rummy, R-U-M-M-Y. September 27th, 1978, 150 kilotons. Just one example of many. Look how many there are. This is just in the valley here. We actually branch out over here, all the way up many miles over to the west, where the Europeans came over and did test with us in the 80s and 90s here. These are more like 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s here across the valley. And Area 51 is right there. But all of this is actually on the side of our giant star fort that I showed in previous videos. They built the military bases and did the nuke test sites on the side of it. So we're coming down the California-Nevada border. We're going to see a new 4.5 strike at the California-Nevada border. Then we're going to see Texas-Oklahoma border region get hit by a new same-sized earthquake as what's striking in Southern California, what should strike in Southern California. If I'm looking for a 5.4 to strike in the Mojave, I'm also going to look for a new 5.4 to strike at the Texas-Oklahoma border. Now, previously, down here where these small earthquakes are now on the screen, a large earthquake struck two weeks ago, the biggest in 100 years in Texas's panhandle there. And it got everybody's attention, knocked chimneys down, knocked facades off houses, destroyed things in people's houses. After that... See where this 3.3 is? I'm going to highlight it here. A 5.4 struck there. So first a 5.9 to 6 struck here at the Panhandle. Then a 5.4 struck here a couple days back. It might even still be on the feed here. Let me see if I can put this back seven days and see if it's still there. Yeah, there it is. So this 5.4 hit. Now... Both locations that have been hit so far are directly next to oil pumping operations, numbering in the millions of drill points. Millions now, not thousands. And I'll show you. When I say millions, I'm not exaggerating. Do you see all these little white specks on the ground here? Now, a town is right in the middle called Odessa, Texas, but all around it are all the drill points. This is just right here at Odessa, Texas. And when I say millions, I'm not joking. So this is just around Odessa, just on its own, and this it keeps going on. I mean, it, it, we really do have a boatload of pumping operations here. And we're going to be moving up to the east-northeast of here. Why? Look at the Craton diagram here coming out of Texas, making a bend up to Dallas. Now, the Craton is what the flow normally follows. So if we're going from West Texas and we're going up past Odessa, past Midland, let me make sure this Craton graphic's off, then we get up here to the Texas-Oklahoma border region. So Oklahoma is on the north side, Texas on the south. We have to watch right in here for something in the 5.4 range. It'll probably be one of the biggest earthquakes in the area in the last 12 years since the whole fracking mess happened. Let's go over to the east and also talk about what to watch for over across into the Midwest. So the New Madrid Seismic Zone got hit, but everybody's eyes should be focused on this one. 2.5 up in Ohio on the edge of the Craton to the east by northeast. Now this ties into something that uh, SO, uh, Suspicious Observers, discovered, which is just a huge discovery, guys. And again, we were already all noticing this back, but he made the discovery, I'll just say it. Um, it's that earth spot discovery where the low pressure systems tend to head. So low pressure systems, big, strong tropical storms as well, uh, tend to be accompanied by large earthquake activity or rare earthquake activity in some cases when it's over land. And the large earthquake activity happening below like hurricanes and cyclones and th those sorts of things. Now there's an electron cascade that happens, simply put, the storm is scuffing its feet across the carpet of the atmosphere. And then the Earth has electricity that it's discharging up out of the Earth. Lightning comes up out of the ground usually, right? It goes up into the sky. Now there's cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning and so forth. But So energy is discharging up out of the Earth. 
there's an exchange that happens actually between the earth and the sky. We all know this, but there's a seismic accompany to this that happens a day either before or after or during this whole storm process. And in this case, we have this giant monsters low cyclone system that's coming over the United States now. I'm negative three Fahrenheit right now. I don't even know what that is in Celsius. It's probably like negative 20 Celsius. Or I don't know what it is, but it's negative three Fahrenheit right now. Actual temperature and a monster low is going right over this area and it's going to go right up across Ohio, up into Canada, right up here, the center of the low. So. Earthquake struck here today, this morning. What's there? I went and looked and I couldn't find much except for this. See this? See where it says methane collection? Well, let me zoom in and show you what's there. So we have some kind of pipeline system here. And we have big towers that have been placed there. And the big towers, let me make sure you guys can see this. The big towers are for burning and flaring things off methane gas see that now look down below see the pipelines and all the guys there and stuff now they got trash trucks going in and out of those places because they're dumping the trash in there now look at this giant landfill here you see all the pipes coming out of the ground that's for venting methane but look at this they got another one and another one and another one and they're like step pyramids okay now, yeah, they do sculpt those like step pyramids, but what I found recently about the, turning trash dumps, putting trash dumps on star forts, then I went and looked at this and I'm like, wait a second, this doesn't look right here. You see this? This doesn't look like a, I've got the height feature turned on. Let me, let me show you. This is supposedly 800 feet high. I'm gonna zoom in on the side of it. We're coming right down at an almost ground level view now. And we'll pan up to go see our 800 foot high mound. Notice they have it completely flat, but next to it over here, they've got these two mounted. They've got this completely flat. They're hiding it from satellite view. I mean, I'll move my mouse over it so you can see it. Here's the railroad level and it's at 809 feet. You can look in the lower right hand corner and it says the foot elevation here. See where it says eight, nine. I'm going to move it over the center of this thing and it's just 805. It says it goes down says it's a depression okay now says it's a depression not one foot rise so let's go down the road and take a look at the pipeline again there's our big burn apparatus there this is interesting because we've got the earthquake happening here and we have the earthquakes happening next to these star forts that I keep finding. And they're turning them into trash dumps, which is so weird. And the pipeline apparatus here is massive. I, I really, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you why they would be able to extract this amount of methane and enough to burn off and collect in pipelines from an old trash dump. The other thing I found interesting by looking at this was going in at this level and looking at the tanks along the road here. They have collection tanks, for instance, right down here. And when looking at it, it looks like it'd be for collecting methane, the tanks themselves. But then when you look at what's written on the side of this thing right here, it says rain for rent rain for rent in these which are going in pipes that go to this that then go down into the ground it's all very odd to have an earthquake next to so hiding the elevation completely literally it just says it's flat when you move your mouse over it you do the height elevation view and it doesn't show anything when you look at a side angle to show it so it looks like a flat field but you can clearly tell that the other side is raised. Why hide it? Why all the screw ups with this? What's going on? Why do we have an earthquake next to it? Well, in light of what I'm finding with the star forts, we have to mention it. So let's go down to the New Madrid seismic zone and show you something while we're at it. So we have the same sized earthquake striking down on the New Madrid that we do over here at Ohio. 
I just showed you what's all around the location in Ohio. Pretty darn interesting, right? Well, here's the town of New Madrid, Missouri. Here's where the earthquake is. Do you notice what's on the screen? Do you see it? Let me show you in case you don't know. This is a well-known Native American Indian mound in New Madrid, Missouri, that is right here off in the distance. Uh, they built a graveyard. Yeah, yeah, isn't that wonderful? They built a graveyard. They built a graveyard next to it and a school and a water tower. Where's the trash dump? So another earthquake next to another Indian mountain, right across the street. Here's the other one that happened back in November. And this is the town of New Madrid, Missouri. New Madrid right here. Now something else to show you that I found right next to this is this. First of all, these are foothills. These are actual mountains. So that it's not like tree clear cut. These are actual mountains. Now I'm gonna measure this for you to show you. This is again that diamond star fort shape that I've been talking about. This is next to the town of New Madrid itself, this thing. It's six miles by nine miles made of mountains. And I'm not measuring it perfect, but there we go. Nine miles, nine miles, six miles or 5.8 and six, 5.8, 5.8, six and six. So nine, nine, six and six. We're right next to the town of New Madrid. And there we go. There's South Missouri. That's the star fort that I was just showing you right here. Oh, and it's facing perfectly east and west. And we get the earthquakes next to the Indian Mound, next to the Star Ford. And it's not up for debate. That really is six by nine in the shape of a Star Ford again. It's another one, just like all the other ones. It just so happens that it's directly in the middle of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, where we had the biggest earthquake in the U.S. history. So what are we going to look for in the Midwest? I'm going to watch over here in between where both sets of rings overlap. This puts us into Indiana, Eastern Illinois, right here. And we're going to watch for something larger than what's on both sides. So we could go into the three range over here at the Indiana, Illinois border region. Guess what's there? Right where those two sets of rings overlap. Well, I won't make you guess. I will show you what's there. See where I have it marked oil well? Let's see if it's still there. It's got to be a few years old. Yep, still there. It's just one I've got marked. There's a whole bunch through here. All the little white pads through the area right here are oil wells. So we're right at the border. We're right at the border of Indiana and Illinois. And our oil and gas fracking operations are on the north side of the New Madrid seismic zone. Going into the Wabash Valley seismic zone over here to Ohio. So that's where we're going to watch. West Coast, keep watch down in Southern California and at the California-Nevada border. And then finally, my last warning for the United States. Well, I don't even know if you want to call this the U.S. Off the coast of Washington, up in the Northwest. You could call for Canada and the United States. Right at the pinnacle tip of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. We're going to see a big earthquake this week, most likely. In the next several days, north side, north side of Vancouver Island. And it could be as big as what was just down in California, mid-range 6, or bigger. I'm trying to get it within a magnitude. If it comes in a mid-range 7, we're going to have some serious problems. But uh, mid-range 6 is due on the north side of the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Why? You got a 6 down south just a couple days ago. And last week, you had a 6 up here in California. And you're smack in the middle in between the two. It's like a fulcrum point or a two-arm scale where you're balancing in the middle right now, sitting high and dry with... Not much seismic activity going on. Now, let's talk about the rest of the planet now that we've talked about the United States for like a half hour or more. Across in the West Pacific, multiple new deep earthquakes and a spread of new fours and fives going across the West Pacific following our red lines again. The red lines you're going to have to pay attention to if you're a new viewer. You're going to get sick of hearing me talk about it, or a long time viewer. You are going to be sick of hearing me talk about this, but... Going across the West Pacific, following out from our deep quakes, spreading out towards Europe and up across, like I've said, all the way over to Alaska, 
we have somewhat of the same equidistantly spaced quakes making a standing wave spreading out across a huge distance and the standing wave is dropping off the quakes along the way this is the force that causes the quakes so it's all fours and fives all the same size going out across and it really is the same size going all the way to japan five five a 4.8 to 4.9 and going out over to the west a five five a 4.8 a 4.9 or i'm sorry they changed them to 5.1s but 5.1 a 5.1 and a 4.9 or a 5.0 and a 5.0 and a 4.8 through the middle of it all we also have another 5.1 heading out over into asia when i say the middle of it all i really want you to look at the west pacific the middle of the west pacific we just f talked about the flow going up to Japan all the same size and the flow going down to the southwest part of the Indo-Australian plate about the same size. And then, lo and behold, going right up into China, the same size. 5.1 and a 4.6. What's the difference between this 5.1 and 4.6 and this 5.0 and 4.8? What's the difference between this 5.1 and 4.6 and this 5.1 and 4.9? Again, they're like hairs of a point on the fours. And with the fives, they're almost the exact same size. So all of this has just been shifted on a 5.0 basis from Japan to China to the South Indian Ocean in a day. That's a lot of movement. It means something bigger is coming in between where all this shifting is taking place. That puts us into Indonesia. So Indonesia is about to get hit. Most likely with the same size that struck up in Alaska and struck over in California. 6.4 to 6.5, just like all the others. In the middle of all the fives, which puts us down to Java again. Over in China, we're going to warn right over here to the west of these two quakes. Do you see the quakes north of Iran? And you see the quakes over here in China. In between the two, we have Afghanistan. Afghanistan is going to be going up to 5.9 in the next few days, just a hair less than what's striking in the West Pacific right now. So 5.9, Afghanistan, North India, Kashmir border region. As we go further to the West, we have a rare deep earthquake down below Turkey, 3.3. I'm going to warn for up to two magnitudes larger on this quake, up to two, which puts us up to 5.3 to come in next to this quake. Puts us right back over to the Aegean Sea, south of Istanbul, north of Crete. And I guess that puts us right to the isle uh, over to the west of Lesbos. This is technically Greek waters here. New deep earthquake, usually followed by a shallower, larger earthquake. Let's talk about Central Europe this time. Now that Italy's in motion and already broke apart multiple times. We're going to see a new break in Bosnia going back down to Albania. So Albania, Bosnia, I just going to, I know I've got a lot of viewers there. From Croatia south all the way to Greece, I've got a lot of viewers. You guys, right here in the middle, you're going to get hit. It's going to be in the five range. Fives are enough to cause serious damage there. We've seen people have fatalities with fives that have struck there just because of the construction, cinder block and stone stack structures. So get the word out now. A new five is incoming very soon. Could be even larger i mean we could go i'm trying to get it within a magnitude it would be the first if a six hits it would be the first six in i don't know for central europe months if not year no certainly years it'd be the first six in years so i'm thinking it's going to be a five just based upon the rest of the fives that are coming across if anything bigger looks like it's going to come in i will up the warning the rest of the activity should be in the four range going around the outside edge of europe this puts us into Romania again, also Ukraine might get hit this time, as well as Poland. So Romania, Ukraine, Poland, fours, probably three sets of fours over the next several days this week. Once we get back out across, I struck out in the UK in my last forecast. That was a couple weeks back, and I haven't issued a new forecast since. Try to figure out what happened. We know what happened now. The flow went out, bypassing the UK entirely, but I have to figure out why. It should have broke up in North Scotland. Instead, it broke out here. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. And it also broke down here on both sides of Iceland. Rake Jane's Ridge broke. And maybe some kind of undersea eruption was taking place there that I just don't have any. Yeah, there's, there's no talk of it. There's no proof of it. I would just have to assume maybe there was some kind of eruption or something along the 
mid-Atlantic ridge, which would be extremely rare. Over across Western Europe, there's not much more to add to this. We're in France. We're also over here in Spain and Portugal, which brings me into the last part of the Starford crap that I have to talk about. I have to talk about it, guys. It's not like it's a comfortable topic for me. But it is what it is. We have earthquakes striking next to each one. And when I show you this one, it's going to be indisputable. You're going to start scratching your head at this point. You're going to be like me. You're going to be like, holy shit, what the hell's going on? Take a look at the screen. Here's Spain and Portugal. I haven't done anything to this. This is our topography. These are mountain ranges again. This is not forestry clear cut. These are huge mountains going up thousands of feet. Anyway, you should be able to see it. The, dot, the shape that I showed you over on the New Madrid Seismic Zone, the one that I showed you that was six miles by nine miles, this one's a whole country. Spain and Portugal. Who are supposedly the people who discovered the Star Fort, right? The Bastion Fort for cannons, right? Sure. And all I had to do was turn this south. That's it. I just turned the map upside down, basically, to really see it. Turns out it looks like all in that same with the one over in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. You have to turn it this exact orientation, facing south by southeast. Old pull flip? I don't know. I, again, this is, it's undeniable this is the shape. And then you've got the ancillary side peak pinnacles on either side here, 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 here. We go back down. I've already measured it. It's the same. It's impossible to be chance. But our earthquakes are striking along the outside edges of both of them. <laughs> it keeps happening. It's like over and over and over again. I, I have to show you. I don't know what to make of it. People ask me what I think it's causing it. I go, I don't know. Very low frequency of some kind. Obviously, there's your giant multi-hundred mile long structures that are in the shape of a certain pointed shape. I would think it's probably for directing energy. Very low frequency energy since the size of these things would be, the, the kind of energy you would be directing would be long wave energy. So power, electricity works on very low frequency. Hundreds of miles along between peaks. Okay, anyway, I, I get kind of distracted when I talk about these things, but how do you explain the earthquake striking below the pinnacle tips of each one of these things, including the one in California with the recycling dump in the middle of it? Anyway, all right. Uh, let's go. Oh, and oh, one more thing. One more thing. Guess what's right pretty much in the middle of this? Well, here, let me turn on our motors and label. Madrid, Spain. So, I mean, it's not the exact middle. The exact middle brings us right into somewhere right in here. The height of the peak of the mountain ranges. Oh, wow, wow, really, really. I had no idea. I really didn't. So I never bothered to look up the center here. In the center, we go up to the highest points. Wow. Eh, got to remember it. Getting back to it. Earthquakes striking out across, spreading out from the pinnacles of our deep earthquakes, and then spreading out following the plate boundaries, the red lines that I've been showing you. And we're talking about all the same sized earthquakes all the way around the planet pretty much right now, all within a hair of a point of each other. This is some kind of standing wave that is spreading out. The wave is the same size going out across the whole planet, and the earthquakes are just showing up along the way as the wave is spreading out. So that stands true for South America and Central America as well. We're dealing with 5.2 to 5.3's worth of energy off the coast of Mexico. We're dealing with 4's and up to 4.9, going down right into Colombia at the border of Panama. Then mid-range 5, the biggest of the bunch, in the middle of all the earthquakes going from Central America down to the south. See that? So again, consider the earthquake up in Mexico as one bookend, and the 4.9 all the way down here in Chile is the other bookend. And in between the two is the biggest of the bunch. And it strikes right here in Peru, south of the Ecuador border region. 5.5. And then we get back down to the south and we're back down to 4.9. Again, same sized earthquakes going out across the whole planet, guys. 5.3 and a 4.9. What's the difference between a 5.3 and a 4.9? And a 5.5 and a 4.9. Not much. That's a huge distance to spread out, though, with the same size energy. And the spacing on it's perfect. Let's get all the smallers out of there and just show you the fives. 
the 4.9s. So it, it really is like a standing wave spreading out across a huge distance. Back to the start of this update. Where's the standing wave coming from? Well, the standing wave is coming from deep down below the planet's surface. I don't know what's down there. Journey to the center of the Earth with Dutch sense. Who, who wants to go? I'll be like the professor in Journey to the Center of the Earth. We're going to go find the Morlocks or find out they're cannibals and the whole story's true. And tar hashtag Tartarian giants are down in Tartarus. The Greek legends of the gods are true. The Hecticianates are down there and the 50-handed creatures that... You don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. 50-handed creatures? What are you talking about? I'm talking about ancient Greek legend, guys. Go look up the legend of of Kronos versus Zeus and what happened and where they got put, where all the where all the creatures got thrown to. You'll find out they got thrown down to a place called Tartarus by Zeus, who threw the Titans, the Giants, and the Hecticianites, Hecticianaires, whatever you want to call them, the 50-handed creatures that could toss mountains. And he tossed them all down into a place called Tartarus. Not to be confused with Tartaria, I guess. Anyway, I don't know what's down there. All I know is that coming up from down there are deep earthquakes hitting the underside of the plates, which then spread out in a standing wave, and it's dropping off earthquakes all the way along the way. So, we need to follow the earthquakes. We need to follow the path. That's why the arrows are on the screen here. I do not need to be here to do updates or tell you where the arrows are pointing, assuming you can see the screen. So you know to watch where the arrows are pointing for the flow to go. And the flow, depending on the size, can get big based upon the deep quakes that feed the flow. So you see a bunch of deep earthquakes, you know there's going to be a big amount of seismic spreading up out and away. Recapping, California, that's where we're going to watch. We're watching on the west coast of the United States. In the West Pacific, I will have a new forecast for the West Pacific coming out tomorrow, which will address Japan, we will address Indonesia again. I'll just reissue the warning for Indonesia. Indonesia is going to be on that watch for 6.5 level activity. You know what? Let's just go ahead and warn Japan while we're at it, since I got you on here. See where all three sets of rings overlap. This comes in just next to Tokyo, north by northeast of Tokyo, out on the plate boundary. We're looking at 5.9 to 6.0 level activity in Japan. I'm trying to get it within a magnitude. If it comes in 6.97, I'm sorry. But you know where to watch now. The most famous earthquake zone on the planet. But it's not a big deal for the people in Japan. If it strikes out in the ocean and it's a 5.9 to 6, it is not a big deal for them. If it's a 7 and it strikes on land and I'm wrong by 200 miles, we got a big deal. Because we're right next to Fukushima. So, hope I'm right. Well, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope nothing hits at all. And I have to come back on and you know beat myself up and figure out where I got it wrong or something. But that's what I said about the California quake. Now we have two people that have perished and a bunch of injured people and a bunch of broken objects. If you live in California, I'm going to say this. Dude, I warned you. What the hell is going on? Why am I getting shut down? Why is everybody up, like, up in arms and trying to shut me down all the time, give me a hard time? What the hell is going on, guys? Look, man, I warned two days before, showed you the deep earthquake, Talked about watching for a shallower, larger earthquake, and then the shallower, larger earthquake hits, and it's a 6.4, and it causes two people to be killed, a bunch of injuries and damage. Why is nobody paying attention? Is everybody, like, scared or something? Like, are you guys ashamed of me or something? You don't want to, you don't have to mention my name. But when I warn, I take it serious. I've got family that lives out here in California. So when I warn you guys, I warn them. I tell them to take the breakable things down off the shelves and so forth. That's all you have to do, and you have to know where to take shelter. You need to have a set of shoes or a pair of hard bottom slippers by the side of your bed. Do you see all the broken stuff in people's houses in all these videos that came out in California? It's, a, it's dark out. You're going to come out. You, oh, and they cut the power to a bunch of places? So you come out, and you don't have any shoes on. Broken glass all over the floor. Literally is Bruce Willis in the movie Die Hard. Speaking of Christmas time, yippee ki -yay. <laughs> I'm Hans Gruber. Okay, you guys, much love.
Merry Christmas if you celebrate the holiday. Happy Hanukkah if you celebrate the holiday. I don't know what other holidays there are, but whatever they are, I hope you have a good one unless you're doing some weird shit. In which case, don't. <laughs> Much love, everybody. I'm going to save this as a video. We're going to put it out over on YouTube. Expect a full international update tomorrow where we go look up all the quakes. I can't do both at the same time. Uh, it'll take two hours of me looking up earthquakes and everybody will get tired and fall asleep by the time we're done. So, Moving on. Time to upload and premiere on the wonderful YouTube service.